to John. I noticed while I was editing that part of the video when I was um, going to show show off my uh, Habilis Trapper knife, I never did turn on my uh, camera. I had it on standby. I forgot to put on record. So that whole thing got skipped. So I'm going to have to do this at home. And I'm going to be putting it at the beginning of the video instead of at the end where it supposed to be because wow. I was editing it um, it was starting to bore me to death so uh, this is kind of to reward people um, earlier than how to wade through uh, later uh, also I wanted there's a plea here too is anybody that knows anything about trees I just would really love to have your comments to tell me if you recognize what a tree a certain tree um, there's several that I tried to figure out what they were and I wasn't able to, um, with what only by the bark, I couldn't figure out because there's my book has so many trees and I could not find it. And so, um, I was able to get a couple of them, but, uh, there were several that I haven't been able to figure out what they are. If you know what kind of trees these are, please, um, give me a comment to this. Reposition the, um, camera so that you can get a close up of, uh, the knife. Here is also the shirt. Once again, Tabillus Bush Tools. And um, I also wanted to go over the uh, consistency of the gin the um, cedar. I missed that too in the video. So let me reposition the camera. All right. Here is the knife. It is the Habilis Trapper. It has um, a four inch cutting. Um, the the length of the cutting edge is four inches, and the overall length I think is about five. It is three sixteenths thick, so it's very heavy. Um, Scandi, it's, it's got a modified Scandi grind, so it's a Scandi with a uh, convex edge on it. The scales are black and orange G10. It's got a, um, a bow drill divot built in, and it also has a uh, lanyard hole fore and aft. Um, and then it's got uh, it's pinned with stainless steel um, pins and it's also glued. The steel is 1095 um, and it's Rockwell hardness is uh, 5859 and it's also um, a blued edge instead of a blued steel which I find fascinating because it gives the whole knife um, kind of a primitive um, look. It's razor sharp and it just to me I think just really a cool looking knife the it really comes with a nice sheath too this is uh, really well stitched and um, it's just a great but that's that's it it's a total beauty uh, the back edge has got a 90 degree angle on it so that you can actually scrape with it or um, uh, light light a or strike a fire steel too the other thing I wanted to mention that I did before is the um, the cedar that you get. Let me show you what that looks like. This is the cedar, and the consistency that really comes to mind when I look at this is basically like a mouse nest. Uh, whenever I've seen a mouse nest, it's got fine, super fine, chewed up um, fluff in it. But when you scrape a cedar tree, and I mentioned, I don't, I think it got cut out, but the first um, tree I was scraping was a piece of dead, um, a section that was dead. And that didn't work very well because it was just kind of flaking off, or it was um, crumbling away. So as far as I know, and it seems like uh, I've had better luck with scraping a live tree. And it also doesn't hurt the tree because you're not scraping, you're just scraping the outside layer. You're not even close to getting into the cambium layer or anything like that. So it doesn't harm the tree at all, but um, seems to be a live tree works better than one that's uh, been dead for a long time. But I'm not positive of that. It's just that one piece that I was scraping on was just, um, it was mostly, it was just kind of like um, creating dust rather than this fibrous, um, stuff that I got here and what this is fantastic for is it's a coal extender so when you make a fire with a bow drill or anything where you um, have a small ember 
if you put this inside um, a bundle of say birch bark or something else dried grasses um, this will actually smolder and grow into a giant ember so it, it makes the um, that's what it's called a coal extender so that's why I love uh, cedar bark you can also use it by itself um, but it seems to work best when you're using it with like uh, something else like birch bark something that and habilis trapper fantastic knife unbelievable company customer service is 10 out of 10 I highly recommend this company to anyone and uh, you would not ever be disappointed if you um, purchase one of their products hey gang this is John and I'm out uh, at one of my favorite parks and it's um a Saturday it's gorgeous suns out and it's gonna be up in the 50s hopefully or low 50s and I just uh, thought I'd take you along on a little uh, walk I'm uh, traveling like don't have a pack on I just basically have water and a couple other little survival items but um, I didn't want to carry anything today see how beautiful it is I hear a pileated woodpecker but um, there's any green yet but all the snow is gone and it's a little damp it's kind of the ground is a little bit soft it's not spongy but soft and i'm sure i'll run into places where it's actually muddy but right right where i am now it's just kind of soft here's open woods I hope the um, it's this camera doesn't make it too flat, but this this um, the depth of what I'm seeing is just unbelievable. It's um, all different terrain features. There's this is how you can tell this is an area where there was gypsum mines, and where you can see this place is where those are collapses where the the roof caved in. And so that's where you get all that kind of weird terrain. It looks like it's bombed out. And there's places, there's sinkholes and stuff. This whole area was um, mined for gypsum in the, uh, I guess it was the mid to late 1800s. And I think they used, uh, I think there was like a French technique or something that they were, uh, if you go into the mine, I've read accounts of people that actually used to go in there and they uh, just look like open, like a mall almost with, and how they supported the, the roof is they didn't excavate all of it. They left pillars. So, um, you know, it would be like big rooms with pillars in them that were um, just the, basically the rock and stuff that they didn't excavate around. And if they got greedy and got too much, that's when you'd have places that collapsed. There's another area where you can see it all caved in. I'm also going to be trying to identify trees. Check out the bark on that one. I think these are wild cherry. I'm just kind of letting you see sort of what I'm seeing because it's really pretty out and the sky is blue. There's clouds, but um, they're white, fluffy clouds. A tree that I want to try to 
identify it's just a little shaggy bark. There's several several of them around here. Another one. Bark's real shaggy looking. Okay. Now as you can see this that path that goes through there. It's really cool looking. Well, this is a narrow gauge railroad that used to run back into the mine and that uh, it was a steam they used steam back then here's another one this one's got ridges horizontal ridges limbs are way up high. There's nothing for 12 feet where they start. This tree looks like it has the horizontal ridges but they've kind of peeled off almost like a birch and have given way to this type of bark. I don't know how to describe that kind of bark, really. And as you can see, this stuff peeled back. So it was almost like a thin skin. Oh, you just heard a pileated woodpecker. As you can see, the trail turns right, but if you go straight and you follow this right here all the way, where it looks like it goes right into a hill, that was where at the entrance of the mine they blasted that and caved it in. So the railroad went right in there. That's a really cool area. And as you can see, that's a sinkhole. There are sinkholes everywhere. This is just all from, uh, hopefully you can see the depth of field here, but these are all sinkholes. Here's a good example of a shag bark hickory. Let's see, if I can see the, the bark is peeling off in long flakes. Try to pan up there. You can see it against the sky. Oh, I think that's making it turn. Let's make it so you can't see the picture what I'm looking at. Now, that noise is a pileated woodpecker, and it's not looking for food. That's just called drumming, and that's um, letting its mate know it's available. Well, I'm assuming that's what it means. It might mean I'm looking for a date, or um, I had a date, and now I'm bragging, but I'm not sure. But I know it's not looking for food right now. Okay, that's a shagbark hickory, and you can actually take the... Uh, remove some of those strips and scrape the inner bark. Uh, I mean, take one of those the flaking scales off, take one of those off and then scrape the underside of it and um, use that for uh, tinder, like the dust. I think this is a hawthorn. If you can see all of the thorns. The trunk has got thorns coming out of it. It's like a 
bark looks like that. Hopefully, there, maybe that's good for sun. Not sure there's um up here. Uh, all up through here where these deer run. There's deer runs everywhere. And what I think it's hawthorn, I'm assuming it is, but um, that makes fantastic kindling. The um I I can start fires in the rain with that stuff. It's um really dry and a uh, uh, it's dead on the trees you break it off and the needles or the thorns themselves and the little twigs um, just go up like you wouldn't believe so that's another great tinder source for uh, kindling not tinder but kindling source for um, areas that don't have um, more of a hardwoods area that doesn't have some of the other stuff like uh, pine resins or uh, maybe birch birch trees, but I found that those work really well. There's a pretty shot of the creek. Hopefully you can hear the riffles. I'm going up this way. I'm looking for one of my favorite resources for fire starting. And that would be a cedar. Now if you see, let me get that better. See all the, all this, um, dry, flaking bark from... I've heard these called strangler vines. I always just call them grape vines, and I don't know if it's the same thing or not. Um, but if somebody else knows, if they're different, let me know. Because I've always just called them grape vines, as you see in the woods all the uh, kind of curved looking stuff everywhere are those vines but I do know they they go up the tree and end up killing the tree so in places like this um, I guess park rangers or services or somebody come through and uh, cut them off toward the ground but as you can see all that dry bark You can use that also for your fire. Um, you could use that for the back side of your bird's nest. You don't want to use something like that for the um, to try to catch a spark or anything like that because it's too dense. But um, and it doesn't really start smoldering like like um, that's why I like cedar is because and I can't think of the guy's name. I think it's Chris. And some survival school in California calls it uh, the cigar effect where um, if you crumple it up it gets um, softer and more hair like rather than just crushing up and falling apart like that's what happens with the um, that strangler vine or or uh, grapevine bark that's what it does it, it just crumbles up so you can use that for the backing of your because that will burn like crazy once you get the flame going. And here is some cool beaver activity. This is new this year. There's beavers here, but they live, they live under the, um, in a stream like this, as opposed to a, a, um, a pond where they like make a pond and they live up underneath, um, debris and the bank so they don't they don't make a beaver lodge like they do in open more open water 
as you can see where they've been stripping that chewing on it and strip this off this is all new new uh, chewed um, and I'm getting close so there's the cedars up here I just saw it here's another fresh cut tree right there oh and here it is laying here on the ground they didn't strip it now here's what I'm looking for is a cedar and I'm going to try to get some cedar bark not sure what Let's see if I can also try to see if I can tell what kind of cedar this is I'll collect a twig Maybe that'll be enough to tell me. Alright, I'll um, get back to you when I get over to a tree that's got suitable bark. Here's one I can, this is one I can scrape. It's, um, it's already broken off. So this side of it, the bark is intact. And I'll scrape here with um, the back edge of my knife and collect it. My battery connection's flaking out and um, not having a tripod with me. It's hard for me to um, show you anything, but I wanted to show you the, the knife I'm carrying. It's, uh, this is a sheath. See if I can back out a little bit. It's got a real fancy, nice sheath. It's got a fire steel loop. And I turned it into a dangler. And I also added a bright orange um, a lanyard, par uh, paracord lanyard, because the, the, the scales are... Um, black and orange but they're kind of subtle so I want it to be real visible in case I dropped it in the fall or something um, I'm going to take it out now this knife is made by Habilis Bush Tools it's phenomenal uh, really cool knife and um, what's even better than the knife is the customer service that you get from them um, I actually had a minor um, cosmetic issue with this knife and I um, sent an email to Steve Staten is the owner and he's the master knife craftsman and within an hour I had a response back um, telling me that um, by the end of the day he'll have another knife in the mail hang on to the knife I have <clears throat> so I'm not out of knife and I will uh, get one to you within two or three days and it came in two days and um, <clears throat> he sent a check with it for return postage for the other one and um, the issue was something that uh, I'm a kind of a knife nut and user slash collector and most people wouldn't even have really been bothered but um, he sent me another one and he also sent me um, two t-shirts which I'll um, I'm wearing one of them so I'll model it for you in a couple minutes but I just wanted to show you uh, what this knife looks like it's phenomenal and this is the knife I was using to um, scrape the cedar bark off the back of the using the back edge of the, the blade and I wasn't able to show that on camera because <clears throat> of where the cedars were I was I had a hard, hard time standing up and doing it all at the same time so I'll uh, show you what the cedar looks like that I got scraped hang on just a second Okay, here's the shirt. I hope I'm far enough away. It says, um, the future of primitive. Yeah, the future of primitive. And this is a, a, a picture of a Habilis Bush tool, which is another model he makes. And then below that is uh, Dave Canterbury's Pathfinder School, because uh, Habilis is an affiliate of theirs.
um, and the back of this is even cooler but I can't show you the back of it but um, I just wanted to say uh, Habilis Bush Tools is a phenomenal company to, to uh, do business with. I recommend them highly, and uh, the customer service has just blew me away because you don't get that anymore. And um, Steve, if you ever see this, I just want to thank you for um, all you do, your fine quality products, and your phenomenal um, customer service. It just, it just unsurpassed. Anyway, this is John, and. Thank you for going along with me. Until the next one, God bless. Hey, it's John again. I just wanted to say that I will do, uh, I'll be doing a, a full review on the, the Habilis Trapper at another time, but I was just um, out with it and I was just kind of showing it off. So um, that will be a video to come. God bless.